Hello everybody, Bill Harrison here with Harden Power Systems. Wanted to take a few minutes, introduce you to a, a new machine. This is in addition to the, uh, the Commander line of Go Kits that, uh, that we design and manufacture at our uh, shop in Tennessee. Um, so far, of course, we've done we've done a commander for the uh, for the Yezu 891, uh, the 857, and the ICOM 7200. Um, there have been no shortage of requests um, for other radios to have a machine designed uh, around. Uh, hopefully, we continue to be able to do just that. Th these are proving to be popular machines. Um, uh, they're they're right within our capabilities as far as uh, the design and the manufacture and the assembly, the the CNC work, the laser work, the 3D printing, um, the, uh, the the construction. Um, uh, they are really uh, honestly it, they're neat examples of a of a turnkey all in one ready to go uh, solution for for obviously portable operations but uh, you could also just set it on the bench in the in the shack or in a RV or uh, in a, a MCOM situation or on field day uh, there's really something pretty special about being able to pull a box um, out of out of the trunk or, or, or whatever and set it down open it up fire it up and start operating. So all that said, probably the first thing you notice, we couldn't even shoot this video like like I've shot a lot of the more detailed videos where the camera's above looking down and, and you're looking you know at like a one square foot space where where you can get a good detailed view. Uh, this machine is too big, uh, too heavy to do that with um, and it is heavy, um, 54 pounds uh, when when it's fully loaded and an ICOM 7200 is installed, it's it's a heavy rig. Um, so uh, let's take it out of the ammunition can and take a look at how the thing is built, how it's designed, and its features. We've got click stands on the bottom, um, which are great little accessories that, that we manufacture and sell. A uh, little cutout here for exactly what I'm using it for. It's just meant as a, a good place to, to easily grab and slide the chassis out. Now obviously if it's in that, uh, in that can with the lid closed, the system is waterproof. Um, almost crush proof. Um, uh, not quite bomb proof but definitely well protected. <coughs> I'm starting from the uh, top down. Uh, on the right hand side about uh, about half of the electronics and the controls um, as well as the the LifePo 4 uh, battery pack uh, that we make here in our shop. Uh, it's a 22 amp hour LifePo 4 battery um, and if you're familiar with LifePo 4 it's it's a great chemistry. Um, as we continue to migrate uh, into that chemistry, I continue to be impressed that, uh, for example, this battery, uh, 22 amp hours, but five pounds seven ounces, um, and capable of very high discharge rates, um, uh, pretty much ideally suited for a large rig like this. Uh, on the right hand side up top, um, surprisingly, room for a. 60 watt folding solar panel that will come with this machine. Um, there is also access to um, uh, uh, the two fuse holders. Uh, one on the negative leg, one on the positive leg. Easy to get to. If uh, something really went wrong, these are going to protect uh, your, your rig. Um, around the back side, we wanted to make sure that that, that you could reach all the connections on the back of, of a radio without having to remove the radio or mess around too much. That's why this generous cutout. Um, and, and if you if you got up in here and really looked, kind of interestingly, you'll see a, 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 a pipe, a raceway that connects the two sides together 
uh, and that's of course where wiring is running so we could have uh, we could manage that wire and still keep it clean keep it out of the way you don't have to worry about catching it or, or snagging it or anything like that and, and of course that's necessary because we really do in a way have two separate devices um, not devices so much but roughly half of the electronics are here and the other half are over here it's just the way the design wanted to be so that tube connects those together um, up here is a, an accessory deck and I'm sure you're already thinking what we were thinking um, uh, likely a tuner could be other devices other peripherals uh, signal link or, or amp or whatever but there's a fair amount of room up here um, you know this is almost 10 inches wide it's 2 inches deep uh, it's 13 inches long the uh, it might be a little bit difficult to see black on black but there's bungee cords here that fit into machine slots um, and without tools you can unhook or rearrange this bungee uh, to help secure whatever you put up here and then these these recessed slots are meant to to catch the uh, the feet which are going to be on just about anything most things that you'd want to run up on this deck uh, idea being you would set that device where you wanted it to be it would settle into one or more of these slots so it's it stopped from sliding this direction and then you could arrange the bungee in such a way that would secure it um, up front uh, main power switch thermal operated uh, 30 amp circuit breaker two USB drivers two Anderson ports we've got dual full range speakers the same speakers we put in the other commanders they sound great people really love the sound um, there is something to be said if you're used to kind of the tinny internal speaker of, uh, of, of most common radios and then you hear that coming through uh, two four watt speakers it's nice um, and it also has a, a headphone jack with a defeat switch this is very useful if, uh, if you're in a situation where one you just want to run silent you would turn off the speaker defeat and use your headphones if you didn't want to use the headphones well, obviously don't just unplug them or set them aside if you're in a situation where you need to hear the radio very well but you also need other people to hear, be able to hear traffic then leave the the defeat switch off the speakers will run and so will the headphones um, uh, solar input jack uh, handles up to 60 watts of solar and of course that's what's matched with here and 60 watts is respectable that's uh, that's in the range of say 4 amps at uh, at, at uh, at 12 plus volts um, we've got uh, a power usage meter that shows you real-time uh, data consum uh, uh, power consumption it records that data uh, it resets if you turn it off but uh, really nice especially if if you're if you're operating you key up and you can see in real time how many amps your radio is pulling uh, if you saw something you didn't expect, a lot more power, for example, being pulled, you'd know to maybe check your connections or check your antenna or something's going on. Um, and it'll also track the total number of, of watts and watt hours used, uh, which can help with battery management. Uh, you can charge the system while you're using it. You can charge it from solar or from AC. Um, now, one, one of the, the neat things, uh, and, and we'll put it, we'll, we'll put the the system back in the can to show you this but one of the neat things about this design um, and you know, of course it was a bit of a challenge to fit a radio of this size and of course you can see that like it is right now that radio is kind of tucked back in there um, which is okay I guess and that's that's normally the way something like this would be done but there's a little cutout here if you grab that and pull so that rig slides on, uh, on on two ball bearing slides that are embedded underneath here um, obviously this is now a much easier uh, machine to to, to, to use um, and it, it kind of neat as well if if you want to there's actually enough room to use the the, the bail on the rig and tilt it up even more um, uh, the antenna extension 
and the ground extension are both part of this slide, uh, which was kind of a neat way to eliminate some of the, uh, the challenges that would be involved with cable management if we had to have that much loose cable in the rear to allow you to slide this forward. This, once we figured this out, it makes it very clean, very easy, um, very reliable. And you can also, uh, if you notice these little keyways here, uh, other devices, other connections, uh, data or USB or whatever, you can plug into the back of the rig, run up either one of these two raceways or both, secure them with the bungees that are sitting here, and then run those cables through these openings and there again you've got nice cable management and things are right out front where you'd want them to be. Um, um, yeah, well maybe that's, that's about it. That was, uh, that was maybe a little quicker um, than I thought we would have to be with this video. Um, I think that's everything. Um, of course, whatever I forgot to tell you about, I'll remember as soon as we turn the camera off. But uh, this is the new Commander 7200. Uh, and, and so named, of course, because it's designed around the 7200, but I know it also accommodates the, uh, the 718. And, uh, of course, any other rig um, of, of similar or smaller dimensions. And when we get the... Uh, uh, the the details ironed out. They'll be on the product page. We'll have we'll have detailed specifications of the size of the radio bay and the equipment deck. So I guess that's it, folks. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Um, we'd love to build you one. This is Bill Harrison with Harden Power Systems, seven three.